As usual, the best place to start is with the title, which in this case gives us two useful bits of information before we even begin reading the poem. First, Hodge, the protagonist, is a drummer, more specifically a drummer boy, which means he is under the age of 18. Second, the name Hodge is a derogatory country yokel version for John Smith or John Doe, that is, an anonymous everyman. Hardy really disliked the term, and by actually calling his subject Hodge, that is, giving him a real name, he presents us with both the individual and the everyman. The poem is obviously about war and the waste of war, but it is more than that. It is about the idea of home. Poor drummer Hodge finds himself dead thousands of miles away on a different part of the planet, where everything is completely alien. War, in this poem, not only kills, it dislocates. They throw in drummer Hodge to rest uncoffined, just as found. His landmark is a copy crest that breaks the veldt around, and foreign constellations west each night above his mound. They, who are they? We don't know. It could be Hodge's own troop. It could be the enemy. They are even more anonymous than he is. The fact they are burying him just as found suggests they are unable to give him the benefit of a proper burial, or are doing it in haste. That word, uncoffined, is a typically Hardy-esque use. Often he will change a word by adding an unexpected prefix or suffix. In this case, though, uncoffined had already been employed in earlier centuries. It's an unusual construction, and not only suggests the obvious, that Hodge is not in a coffin, but also that in some way he's been turned out of one. In the second stanza, the idea of alienation is made plain. Young Hodge, the drummer, never knew, fresh from his Wessex home, the meaning of the broad Karoo, the bush, the dusty loam, and why uprose to nightly view strange stars amid the gloam. Hodge is young and fresh, his home is Wessex, not this place. This landscape is strange to him, as are the words used to describe it, the veldt, the Karoo, etc. And it's the heavens that are alien as well, a point emphasised in each stanza. As a country boy, Hodge would be used to seeing the full panoply of the stars in the night sky, and would probably be able to identify various constellations. Here in the southern hemisphere, some would appear upside down, others would not be visible at all. And in the final verse comes perhaps the cruelest blow. Although a portion of the land remains Hodge, his identity persists, but that identity does not, as happens in Rupert Brooke's poem The Soldier, written some years later, it does not also embody his country, his home. On the contrary, his homely northern breast and brain grow to some southern tree. He will take his place in this alien landscape, he will remain Hodge, but he will not be at home, and his being will become physically subsumed by the foreign. In fact, the situation is more disturbing. The stars, the constellations, are now strange-eyed, not just foreign or strange. They are looking down over Hodge. They reign over him. He's theirs forever. The universe itself seems to have sided against him. Finally, I'd like to draw attention to part of the structure of the poem. Each stanza is constructed in exactly the same way. The first two lines direct our view to Hodge. The second two lines raise our vision to the wider landscape in which he finds himself. And the last two lines raise our vision even higher, up into the heavens. The construction of the poem, the way it changes our focus, usually without us realising it, contributes to the pathos of Hodge's situation.